My name is Samuel Wheeler. I am the Illinois State Historian, and you are watching Author's Voice. Uh, what I wanted to ask is, how was the land of Lincoln created? We know why it's Lincoln, but how? Do we know that at all? And we talked before about it, and you said that would be an interesting pamphlet. Oh, sure. Well, in 1955, the Illinois legislature um, gave us that, uh, that moniker, but we were talking earlier, when does that phrase really come into common parlance? And it'd be interesting to do a newspaper search where that comes about. My suspicion, my guess, is that it comes about after the assassination, as uh, uh, folks realize that uh, Abraham Lincoln has become the most famous Illinoisan that there's ever been. And I would argue Abraham Lincoln's gonna go down as the most famous Illinoisan there will ever be. And certainly that begins to uh, take Jordan, shape. <laughs> Oprah? I think Abraham Lincoln's even more famous than Oprah. Lengthy, I wanna bring Sam into this for a moment and jump forward to our bicentennial. And the exhibit that you uh, are part and parcel of putting together and has already opened yeah. at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum in Springfield. Mm -hmm. And I presume they can go on the website there and see about it and hours and how to get to it. Uh, but tell us about the exhibit and what's happening sure. in the, for the bicentennial for the state that was helped to be created by uh, the Pope and Cook and uh, now Cicero. Yeah, so first off, Dan, thank you so much for having me up here uh, today. The uh, Mr. Cicero's book came out. I was so excited uh, about it. What a great contribution uh, at the Bicentennial of Illinois History. As, as you all were talking and as I've been looking through um, uh, Frank's book, um, you know, in the historiography of uh, Illinois, uh, there's often um, books about Chicago and books about the rest of Illinois. This is a really nice book that combines um, those two histories. This is a, uh, a book that reminds us how much geography matters in the evolution of our state, as, uh, as Frank uh, so eloquently talked about. In our exhibit at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum, we wanted to uh, make an exhibit in 2018 that uh, highlighted uh, Illinois' contributions to the world. And in addition to agriculture, in addition to industry, we've also contributed uh, something towards national leadership. For, uh, pretty remarkable individuals who went on to become president of the United States uh, lived in Illinois. Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, Ronald Reagan, and Barack Obama. And in our exhibit, we, uh, we frame uh, those discussions, those biographies, by talking about Illinois. What is it about Illinois that uh, contributed these four pretty amazing individuals? And we talk about many of the themes uh, in Frank Cicero's book. Um, Illinois being a microcosm at the nation at large. These individuals are able to uh, confront uh, some of the issues that plague Americans on the local level um, here in Illinois. And uh, the very first original artifact in our exhibit in Springfield is the original Constitution of 1818. That was a real coup for us to get that. Uh, the uh, Illinois State Archives and Dave Jones were able to uh, uh, loan that piece to us. And uh, what an amazing uh, artifact that documents the imperfections of Illinois as they started, uh, certainly. But that's where the state begins its evolution. It comes into, it becomes uh, one of the, uh, the premier states in the union and it all starts with that constitution. So we've had four uh, yeah. amazing presidents yep. coming out of here. I hate to be the Avis to Hertz. Is Ohio more? Uh, have we caught up with them? I think Ohio had. Five. So Am I wrong? I have to, we get I have this to question a lot. Does, did Illinois contribute the the uh, the most presidents? And the answer is no. However, I put our quality up yeah. <laughs> against uh, against almost everybody. Certainly, Virginia um, outpaces us in yeah, terms of the, All the, the queer uh, quantity. Sure. But um, there's. That's right. There's not a lightweight amongst uh, Illinois presidents. And he would have been a good president, Garfield, I think. Ulysses S. Grant is probably the president that's the least known uh, in, in that group. Even uh, with uh, Grant, the 
the musical coming up after Ron Chernow's book. Oh, wow. Well, that's something to really look forward to, yeah, right? Well, yeah. it, it's not thought of yet. But. Yeah, I, I think that would be uh, phenomenal. I think you said something interesting. You yeah. said many things interesting, but one of the most important points I think you make is one that we've been making here for a long time. Lincoln came out of central Illinois, yeah. and every political and social stripe went through central Illinois, a border state. And he had to learn how to deal with all of that and understand all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think helped make him whom he was. Well, Illinois being, and him being that part of it. Certainly, Illinois being in central Illinois is uh, integral to his makeup. That is where he begins to carve out a very complicated position on American slavery. As the country is, um, uh, this is the most divisive issue uh, confronting uh, the nation at large, and here in central Illinois, Lincoln is doing battle with both sides uh, on that slavery issue. It's no coincidence that Stephen A. Douglas and Abraham Lincoln were central Ill Illinoisans. Uh, and of course, the most divisive uh, presidential election in American history, they're both featured on the national ticket. How could it not have things to back it up with, as I'm sure, sure you do too, but how did he deal with a society that, especially in the area he was in, in, in that border state, how do you deal with that during his political rise? So Frederick Douglass, when he met Abraham Lincoln during the American Civil War, he remarks later that Lincoln really treated him as a human being. He didn't remind him of the differences uh, in, in the race. And he's, Frederick Douglass says that was all the more remarkable because Abraham Lincoln came from a state with black codes. And so Abraham Lincoln uh, certainly uh, lives in the state of Illinois where we have this complicated uh, relationship with slavery by a different name. When Mr. Lincoln is a member of the Illinois legislature, for instance, uh, the Illinois legislature was petitioned by uh, several southern states. They were asked to uh, issue a resolution on, uh, against abolitionists. Um, Mr. Lincoln is one of a very small number of those members of the Illinois legislature that votes against the, that resolution, which passed overwhelmingly, by the way, and he takes a step for, he takes it a step further and actually issues a protest statement um, against slavery, calling it uh, an institution founded on uh, injustice and bad policy. Um, Abraham Lincoln carves out, as we said earlier, a very complicated position uh, on slavery. He's not an abolitionist, by the way. The great emancipator is not president. an abolitionist. Well, right? he wouldn't have been president. Right. So it's like Seward was not going to be president. During the uh, Lincoln-Douglas debates, uh, Douglas is trying to paint Abraham Lincoln as a, a, a radical abolitionist. Mr. Lincoln spends a lot of time during those debates uh, uh, defining his position. I'm not an abolitionist. I'm against slavery. But I'm not uh, for the immediate emancipation well, the of The Constitution slavery. was there. <laughs> the Constitution's there, and then as President of the United States, the war came. And that gives Abraham Lincoln that, uh, that moment uh, to rewrite American history, to he attack that slavery, war to, to come, save by the, the Union. Way. He did allow that war to come. We, we all say he was not a war president, but he felt, and in the letter to George Robinson mm -hmm. back in 56, 18, uh, he said that he felt the only way slavery was going to end was through war. The tug's going to come, and it may as well come may now as well come rather than now. later. Exactly yeah. it. Um, bringing authors to you and to the world. So, Sam Wheeler, thank you so much as a state historian being here. I think everyone should get down to Springfield during this bicentennial time. And also, I'm sure there are local bicentennial exhibits and uh, other things going on, so they should look for that. I hope they can get that on the state website, yes? Yeah, so come see us at our museum. You mm -hmm. can see that exhibit from now through the end of the year, and you can go to Illinois200.com to learn what the Bicentennial Commission's up to.